Okay, welcome to the very last video for the, the Marine Inverter course. And this is going to cover three different phylum, uh, the Bryzo, the Brachiopoda, and the Foranita. Uh, and you're going to see all of these as you're diving around um, coastal New Zealand. And so I'd like you to be able to recognize them. They're all very different, but they share co this common feeding structure called a blophophore, and that's why they're sometimes referred to as the blophophorates. And this feeding structure is a crown of hollow ciliated tentacles. Uh, you've already looked at how these things work, as in the um, pharyngeal basket and the lamellibranch gills of the bivalves. They are ciliated and draw water across them and take uh, particles out of the water. All right, uh, and these ones, they um, also, in most cases, act as a type of a rudimentary gill. So this is a lace coral. This is the type of thing you might see. And the lace corals are called bryozoans. Uh, you'll see the bryozoans in this case. Uh, you might recognize this as uh, a clonia, and this is riddled with bryozoan colonies living on the fronds of the um, of the kelp. All these white patches are bryozoans or lace corals. And this is a cl very close up of uh, some of these bryozoans, and you can see uh, that it is a colonial organism much like a coral, it's not a coral, it's not a cnidarian, and each of these little bricks is a individual zoan, and each of those little white areas on the inside is a single, uh, yeah, that's the animal, that's the animal part. So they are very, very small organisms that filter feed, much like um, the hydrozoan the hydroids that we look at. Uh, the overall colonies can get, get quite large. This is a uh, type of uh, foliate uh, bryozoan and uh, often mistaken for plants. Here's one that takes a um, form of a, more of a stick. It's called a stick bryozoan and you can see how small they are. This little fuzz on the outside of these things, that is the loaf for those are the ciliated um, cleaning or sorry, ciliated filter feeding portion. Another photo of two different types of um, bryozoans. Here are stick bryozoans and then is a branched bryozoan. Uh, they can, uh, you won't you won't be responsible for these um, class names. The majority of them are the, the gymnolimata. Uh, they're often uh, nudibranch food, so you find nudibranchs on these uh, um, these bryozoans quite a bit, and they're grazed by the nudibranchs. Um, generally less than half a millimeter in length for each of the zoids. Uh, they take on different shapes and um, they have the trunk, the sheet, the introvert or the body, and the loaf of four. Okay, so this is a um, sort of a generalized picture of a bryozoan polyp. All right, so this is sort of a branched colony like so. All right, there's the thing. And then, so this is the sheet, it's shared. Uh, amongst the colony. The, local, the uh, animal is all of this part that you can see here, and then here's the lophophore and its tentacles, which are ciliated in um, the action of the cilia. In straining the water, we've seen many times before. There's a nice picture of um, the lophophores uh, sticking out of the colony and it's a collective sheet. Again, the uh, another picture of the loaf of horse. 
and you can see that in fact these things are bilaterally symmetrical. So here's the plane of symmetry um, and they are um, equal on both sides. Okay, the exoskeleton, it might be uh, chitin like we saw in arthropods or uh, in hydrozoan colonies or it might be calcium carbonate as in um, the bivalves or in the colonies uh, in hard corals and that um, coats the bryozoan provides protection and can be withdrawn into it um, so each of the uh, each of the oh, we'll leave that okay the colonies could be calcareous in shape okay so they might be encrusting they could be sheet like they could be foliaceous or branching Okay, so that's more of a plant type um, structure that could be stoloniferous, which is like um, hydroid colonies where they're uh, long sort of sticks. Um, and, but mostly they're fairly small, uh, but they can get up to half a meter, a meter in height if they're, if they're certain species. Uh, they all use the love for feeding, as we said, um, and they have a perculum, which close over the, um, the withdrawn body. Okay. They're mostly hermaphrodites in terms of reproduction, and they broadcast spawn and generally brood their eggs. Um, I'm going through this very quickly because we'll cover, recover it in class and it's, we have three files to get through in this video. Uh, they, um, as we said, they brood or broadcast spawn, the larva, and uh, these larvae can live in the water column for quite a long time, uh, settle, become this ancestral, uh, you see the root word ancestry, or, um, and then they uh, butt out into the large uh, bryozoan colonies. Okay, we'll go to the next one, the brachiopods, the next phylum. These are lamp shells. This is uh, 330 living species that we know of, but 12,000 fossil species, and they've been around for a long, long time. They used to be much more common, but have been kind of outcompeted in, in many places. Um, but, they're, but the red lamp shells are very common in the um, near shore east coast rocky uh, reefs that you'll be often diving in um, so they look like bivalves joined with they've got two shells joined at the posterior end and let's have a look and this is the type of thing that you'll see this is a red lamb shell if we take a pen and we draw we can see that in, it's different and actually you see an oyster right here okay uh, that is on the same reef, and that is a bivalve. These ones are different though. They're bilaterally symmetrical on this line, this plane of symmetry, down this line on the body, as opposed to being cut symmetrically through the body this way. And all of the lamp shells will have this little, this little sort of lip where they have a little drop in the shell uh, right in the center. So, and you can see it here as well. So they're bilaterally symmetrical, the opposite direction as the mollusks. Here is one buried in the um, sediment. You can see they've got this little tail structure. And here is a picture of another one. You can see it's bilaterally symmetrical, split right down this plane. And you can see the loaf of four on this side and the loaf of four on this side uh, doing their feeding. So they're, they look like bivalves, but they're not bivalves. Uh, the pedicle is that attachment in the substrate. It's like the tail. You'll never see a pedicle on a, on a bivalve. Okay. Um, they reproduce by uh, broadcast spawning and then some will brood the eggs um, and they really are very poorly known in terms of their larval uh, reproduction.
introduction. The phylum Foranida, that's the last one, they look much like um, a, a, what do you call it, a Christmas tree worm. All right, but they're not annelids. So you'd think that they, it'd be very hard to tell whether they're annelids or not unless you recognize the, the structure of the uh, loaf of four and how it differs uh, just slightly from the structure of the um, palps in the Christmas tree worms. Uh, they're both bilaterally symmetrical, of course, both of them will have two uh, very similar structures. Um, they're bilaterally symmetrical, just as the uh, annelid worms are. Um, they're not segmented. Uh, here's, here's another picture. So, again, the bilateral symmetry right down the center. Uh, they withdraw into a, uh, a tube, just like the, cent just like the annelid worms. And of course, since they have very similar functions, they have very, very similar forms. Um, these ones are not segmented, though. They don't have the parapodia and setae that the annelids have. Um, and they live in the tubes on muddy, sandy, or rocky substrates. Um, we have them around uh, Tarana. Okay. And they uh, are dioecious or hermaphrodites and have a different type of larva than the, uh, than the annelids. 